Razabani for IFL TV in association with MTK Global. Delighted to have with me on Zoom today, all the way from Canada, Mr. Phil LoGreco. Phil, it's been a while. How are we doing? All good, my man. Just, you know, surviving, surviving during this, uh, during these strange times that we're living in, but uh, hanging in there. Um, before I, we talk about anything, how's the family, uh, how's the child, how's the missus, everyone well and safe? Everybody's well, you know, my dad is getting better. He, you know, about a year ago, he had a brain surgery. Uh, he's getting better. Uh, every day he's recovering, exercising every day, daily. Wife is doing well. My kid is going. She's going to be two years old next month. Uh, you know, she's, uh, she definitely keeps me very busy. Obviously, we've been in a very difficult situation. Well, the whole world has been in a very difficult situation with this whole pandemic and uh, COVID-19. Um, What's this current situation in general, just with boxing in, in Canada? Have you, are there events happening? Are there bouts taking place? Well, I had, just before the pandemic, I had something planned with the Niagara Falls, with the casinos, with the, with the mayor, with the city, city councils. We're going to start a boxing series, sort of like Brooklyn boxing, right? We're going to have massive shows, big lights, big fights. And, you know, my fighter, Lucas Body was going to start headlining them. And then obviously... The pandemic happened last year. So in Ontario, in Canada, we have tried to do other things, try to get creative, but nothing. They're not budging for nothing. So I'm saying it, you know, for 2022, I think we'll be able to see something. I don't think not even this year. Uh, I would say third, third quarter next year, my prediction. Well, hopefully we'll get to see boxing resume. We've seen boxing come back last week here in the uk uh, and we're hoping that we don't go into any more kind of difficulties where boxing has to uh, get postponed uh, once and for all again um i feel just want to touch on the topic obviously you you've been in the industry for a very very long time you've been in there with some great fighters top of my head errol spence i know last minute notice amir khan etc is it difficult as a fighter to once retired to kind of keep yourself occupied outside of the world of boxing, you know, all you've known is boxing, boxing, boxing. So is it difficult once you retire to just focus on other aspects and ventures? If that's all you know, yeah, it's very difficult. Um, for me, when I was boxing, uh, I always worry about my next move, after the life after boxing. And I make sure that I don't want to be known as, you know, the fighter that, you know, all he knows is boxing. I wear different hats. And Throughout my career, I was able to uh, learn and adapt to other things. So when one day I would exit, I uh, would have something to fall back on. And I'm glad I do. So, yeah, but it is hard. I think about it all the time. I want to jump in the ring. I, want, I need to lose though, like at least 30 pounds just to have a good closure. You know, uh, I like, you know, I like to fight. Uh, I like, you know, there's nothing better than after a hard sparring match. You take the shower, you feel good. There's no other drug. There's no, no high. After sparring or after a fight, you feel so good, like a, like, like a warrior, unbeat, unbeatable. That's why it's so addictive. It's that feeling. So when you were, when you were fighting, uh, during your career, what ideas would come to your head on what you want to do? What, what would you do? Or would you, would you have ideas and then invest your money into that venture straight away or would you wait, say, move I'm glad you asked. So, and, and then move into some sort of venture? So what happened with me was because I was a self-pilot in my own career. I made my own moves since I was 10 years old. I made my own moves. I learned the game while I was actually boxing. I had no mentors. I had to mentor myself. I had to have some sort of guidance, you know, and I had the support from my parents and my father and my brother as well. Uh, but when I was turning pro, I was kind of taking a lot of notes, handwritten notes, mental notes, has to one day when I'm done and I'm going to manage fighters, these are the things and these are the steps that they should take and these are the steps and these are the things that they should not do. So that was my first thing uh, on my bucket list. And I tell you, I have a lot of notes. I used to just write things down all the time going back from when I started boxing in Montreal. Uh, and then 
as I got older and I started making a little bit of money, then I got into real estate and that really just saved and kept what I earned. And then some, uh, a lot of fighters, they get the first paycheck. Unfortunately, what they do, they buy the first watch or jewelry or a car. Well, then there's no money. Maybe they don't get the fight that they wanted to. Maybe they come up short. And I did the opposite. I bought roofs and then the bricks, the roofs, they got me the cars and then some, you know, they pay for the cars, they pay for the lifestyle, smart investments. And I encourage a lot of fighters, if you're watching, the first thing that you should do is please, please, please buy a roof for your head. I see now a lot of managers or promoters, they don't advise uh, fighters how to invest their money. And for me, it comes, it boils down to, this is grade two math, max grade four math. That's all it is. And when it comes to financing and finances. Um, so I encourage a lot of fighters just to buy real estate. As soon as you get your first paycheck, go talk to a mortgage agent, go to the bank, say, hey, how can I get a loan? I want to buy a house. Do that first. Then the house buys you the car, buys you the jewelry because appreciation goes up. So for example, in Toronto, in Canada last year, where I'm from, appreciation went up 30%. So if you bought a house, let's say for uh, 400,000 in 2019, it went up 30%. So now you could sell it for 520,000. Well, guess what? Now you got made 120,000, that equals, you get the car, you get the watches, you get the lifestyle, and you keep your money. So uh, a lot of fighters don't have that guidance. A lot of managers don't give that advice. Maybe they'll say, hey, kid, don't waste your money. Save your money. Well, what good does that do? I mean, that's like, you're not giving them, you're not telling them the secret to the secret sauce. That's why a lot of fighters go broke. Guidance. And for the fighters that, I, that I'm going to sign and that I'm going to guide, that is the first thing. I want to I help them keep the money they got and then some. I didn't make a lot of money respect to the big superstars. But if I had all that capital, I would have a lot more. But I tell you, that I bet you I, I probably did more better than most. Even some champions, let's just say. So um, there's, there's, there's a lot of balls in boxing, but not enough brains. So I'll leave it at that. And I hope that fighters take my words seriously and learn about finances. It's grade two, max grade four math. Do you feel though that the times have changed now? I know some fighters from the late nineties that unfortunately have had to go and find second jobs off life after boxing. But recently now, because knowledge is more widespread, loads of social media, a lot more fighters are seem a bit more wiser in, in today's generation. Would, would you say it's correct? Yes and no. I mean, for example, you have guys like Adrian Broner, is he wiser? Last time I checked, he said he had 13 bells in his bank account, right? Um, you, can you see a guy like, say, Joante Davis do well and keep his money? You know, I mean, there are some fighters that I know that have done well and kept their money and then some. And there are some that made even over 100 million and they're broke. I won't mention who they are and I'm, you know, I met them in person and it's sad, you know. Um, at one point, this particular individual, he was even tweeting anything for 20 bucks. So. Let's talk about some, you've obviously gone into management. So let's talk a bit about a fighter that you've signed that you rate highly in, in the prints himself, Lucas Body, um, 10 fights, 10 KOs, kind of the, um, the hidden gem that you say he is of the lightweight division. We know the lightweight division is stacked with Teofimo Lopez, the undisputed champion, Javante Davis, Devin Haney, Ryan Garcia. And you, you firmly believe that eventually Lucas will fit in that category and those four kings will be fighting. Why is Lucas so special? Well, first of all, I was blessed to have him from my city. I know the kid from, tiny, from since he was like a teen. But why is he so special? It's a good question because 
not only yes, he's a, he's a puncher and the kid can punch. I even I, I felt the power. The guy's got power, but he knows how to box. He was in the National Olympic boxing team for Canada. He was knocking guys out at the amateur level. Most most of you may say, well, he's standing on Tanaka, so is he fuck? You're right. Maybe to some of my look inflated, maybe to not. But the way you know that the, if this guy was a serious puncher, go take a look at the fights that he had as an amateur. Internationally, he was knocking guys out. That's when you know you have a puncher. That's when you know you have a boxer, puncher, anything that a manager can ask for. It's too bad that this pandemic happened because the world of boxing would have known who this guy was. We had a great plan going on in Niagara Falls. You know, if according to the plans, he should have been ranked already top three by one of the sanctioning bodies that were gonna, that was the plan. Unfortunately, the pandemic happened. So we had a setback. A lot of fighters had set, setbacks. So it's kind of frustrating because he is the hottest boxing prospect that nobody knows. That I can promise you. The guy can box, he can punch, he's got it all. And he's frustrated himself. He's willing to fight anybody at any given hour. So, uh, we're working towards getting him the big lights and the big fights, right? So that's his goal. And I think if the stars align, I think within 18 months or so, you could throw him in there with anybody. You mentioned that you're going to come out in Niagara Falls. Phil, normally fighters take their time to progress, learn their craft, get the experience, get to 16, 17, 18, 19 and 0, and then start stepping up. Lucas is 10. Do you feel like he's ready to step up now? He's ready to step up now, but he's not. I'm not going to throw him in there with the top guys yet. It doesn't make any sense. You know, let the kid mature a little bit more. I think that I think he, what he needs, obviously, he hasn't fought any names yet, but he, he needs that name fighter. But he, the kid's willing to fight anybody. And that's what I love about it. I mean, the kid, his last fight, he flew on his own. Obviously, he went to Mexico on his own, no coach, no nothing, regardless who he fought, by himself to get, get himself a 10th fight because he didn't want to sit on his ass anymore. And I discouraged him not to go, and he still went. So that tells me that, that this kid does not care. He could put this kid in any corner, and he'll be just fine, and he'll find a way to get out. He always finds a way, and we're going to find a way to give him the big fights, the big lights, such as, you know, hopefully one day getting into the David Haynes, if you're listening to um, Javante Davis, Ryan Garcia, Lomachenko, Teofimo Lopez. This is you know, the lightweight division. There's nothing but punchers. I don't think any time in any place in history, there were so many punchers in the lightweight division. And yet the world of boxing will know about Lucas and who's another puncher that will be in the mix. We just got to get this guy a platform to, 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 to fight somebody so uh, the five fans can see how good this kid is. You talk about the lightweight division and how there's so many punches, but in terms of matchmaking, has it been difficult to, to match him? Because you look at the current dynamics of those four fighters that you just mentioned in Lopez, Haney, Javante, and Ryan Garcia. All four of them are, are with different promoters. Now, I know, I know Devin Haney and Devin Haney is one who's with Eddie Hearn and DeZone, and Ryan Garcia is with Golden Boy and DeZone. They're the only ones on the same network, but Javante, um, et cetera, they're on different networks. So is that a problem in boxing now where you can't mix with these fighters because people are in the way, the managers are in the way, the promoters are in the way and blocking them from fighting on different networks? Like I said, there's too much balls, not enough brains in boxing, right? And that's why these things happen. And I think if, you know, uh, during these hard times, if the fighters, I know the fighters want to fight. If the promoters, managers, advisors, they actually give the people what they want, not worry about so much what they're making, then, you know, give the people the fights that they want to see, uh, boxing will be in a better place. And I think it's starting to happen. Um, my fighter right now, we're not signed with anybody. So he's a free agent. Um, we're willing to take on any offers. We're willing to uh, talk to anybody, negotiate with anyone. Um, 
And, you know, I, I just want to show the world of boxing what this kid is about because uh, the kid has the goods. And it's sad. It's, it's, it's kind of like, it's kind of like, uh, it sucks the fact that he had to wait a whole year because last year should have been his coming out party instead he had three, you know, lower level opponent fights just to keep himself busy. And it sucks. So I hope that uh, this year, and I'm pretty confident that this year will be a, a good year for us. And that was my next question. Moving on to, in terms of promoting wise, um, there's different options, different networks out there. Have you been approached? Have you approached anyone about working in collaboration? I have. Yeah, I have a few. Uh, they were interested for sure. Um, but unfortunately during these times, they couldn't take on, on you know, many uh, fighters because they were stacked with they had to fulfill in contracts but we have there's some interest and we're still going to continue talking to them uh, I haven't talked to anybody in the UK uh, about Lucas I would love to talk to uh, um, somebody in the UK that might be interested in him uh, um, I think he's worth a look at like it's a damn shame that I have and boxing has the the probably the best prospect in boxing that's unknown. And it sucks because the guy's a puncher. The guy delivers. The guy does deliver. And it sucks. So I'm, I have to, I'm here to, to express uh, uh, all the best that I can to make people understand and, and even to go ahead and take a look at him. You know, even on box rec, even though box rec, the box rec doesn't really, nobody really watch understands it or nobody really follows it but he's he's ranked i think pretty decent on box rec as well so um yeah man we're we're willing to to look at anything right now to get you know to uh fight anybody or potentially do a deal with someone for sure okay well we look forward to it uh phil hopefully there's some positive news for lucas this year and uh certainly look to cover him uh, moving forward, uh, Phil. Just finally, I'll end on this. I'll end on this just because you mentioned his name. Adrian Broner returned back to boxing the other day. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, for some weird reason, during the week, the fight was changed from 140 pounds to 147 pounds. It was set 140 pounds. Um, he's been out of the ring for a number of years. He came back. wasn't the greatest performance. Um, does it look like he's just back for the payday, or? Well, you know what, first of all, me being a fighter, I'm actually rooting for him because if he's able, at 135, 140, Adrian Brown was, especially at 135, he was unbe like unbeatable. If this kid some way somehow finds his motivation again and he turns his life around, it will be a great comeback story. It will be a great underdog story. It will inspire a lot of people, a lot of people. Uh, they're suffering with mental health or so on and so forth. I mean, Tyson Fury did it. Nobody thought that Tyson Fury was going to go this far, especially what happened after he beat Klitschko. So it'd be a great undercover, uh, under, underdog star. I would like to see him get ahead. In terms of him, I know he's what, four five eight division champion. Um, do you feel like he's past his peak though now? Or do you feel like he's, he's still got something left in him to prove the doubt as well? If he wants to dig at 31, he's got enough to dig. Uh, I think he had he was overwhelmed with success at 23 years old after he poly. And everybody see Floyd Mayweather set the bar so high, but people don't forget that Pretty Boy was all about boxing first. He was all about but Pretty Boy was up until Pretty Boy was Pretty Boy until 31, 32 maybe 30, 32 years old, and it became money. So do the work. Don't, don't live that guy's life. Live your own life to all the fighters. You know, don't look at that guy. Look at, stay in your lane. You know what I mean? That's the best way I can put it. Stay in your lane. Focus on yourself. Focus on your goals. And just, you know, work hard, and you'll get there, you know. And if, going back to Adrian Brown, if he can just um, – Dig deep, dig again, and he can make the weight. If he can, I would love to see him fight a lightweight again. He fights a lightweight, we will see the best Adrian Boner ever again. He fights at 140, 147. Unfortunately, his peak weight 
was 135. His best performances were as a 135. So you got to go back to that peak weight. Now he's 31 years old. Metabolism slowed down. I know a little bit about that. And I was, you know, from being fighting at 47, ballooning up to 192. It's a lot of weight, right? So, I mean, you, there are examples out there. If you want to do it, you can. Okay, Phil, thank you so much for jumping on. Give me a few moments uh, of your time. I know you're a very, very busy man uh, to pin down. Um, and hopefully uh, we'll catch up with Lucas Bardi in, in the coming week or so as well. Uh, yeah, to you guys that are watching, check them out. Lucas Body. Go on his Instagram, go on YouTube, you know. Uh, do your own research, you know. Don't let us tell you how good he is. Do, for, do your own research for yourself, how good this kid can be if he's got it right. And he has his team bar behind him. We just need that call. We just need that opportunity. We just need that dialogue with someone that's going to uh, hopefully understand uh, how good this kid is and how far we can go. So thanks. Phil, stay well, stay safe, uh, and we'll catch up with you soon. Phil Greco for IFO TV, thank you very much. Thank you.